Good afternoon and a warm welcome from Hillhead. I'm Adam Matman and I'll be bringing this game to you between the Whitley Bay Beacons and the Guildford Lightning. Both sides have already been in action this season. Guildford losing to Solihull and Streatham in their first two games. Whitley losing to the league champions last weekend themselves. So both will be looking for their first points of the season. It's a different Guildford Lightning lineup to the one that last visited Hillheads almost two years ago. Their last visit was supposed to be in January 2022, but uh, for anyone who can remember those bad storms, we had the uh, roof blew off here at the ice rink and the game was called off, never to be replayed. But um, the girls have made the journey up from Surrey and some of them stopping overnight. And um, I'm sure they'll be looking for their reward out on the ice. Biggest news over the summer is, of course, there is no more Louise Adams, the GB, oh, former GB superstar, deciding to hang up the skates at uh, Beth Hill. Still there, still very much the leader of this team. She's going to line up on the uh, top unit with Croatian-born Anja Karijevic and Welsh-born Jess Jones, who's back playing in the WNIHL after having a year over in North America. She was with the uh, Queen Bees prior to that. For the Beacons, they're going to be led, of course, by their own GB superstar, Steph Towns. Abby Coulshaw on our left wing, who's the captain of the Beacons. And Ruby Newlands, the Ruby Rocket, out on the right wing. Caitlin Morrison will line up alongside Vicky Smith on the blue line. And we're almost ready to get underway. Jamie Briggs, who's a uh, WNHL defender herself, plays for the Sheffield Shadows. She's the senior referee for this game, and she's going to get us underway. Both players went early then. Seth Towns just about wins it, comes out with it, will dump in straight away. Ruby Newlands will give chase. It's going to be gathered on the far side, though, by Ellie Porter. Collected by Kadievich, plays it to Jess Jones, who will chase after it. She's a good fast skater, is Jess. Part of a GB under 18 lineup who were. Uh, took part in uh, the World Championships in Dumfries in January. Still only 17, so I think she's uh, going to be part of that team once again this year. It's going to be held in Heaven Vane in the Netherlands. Action behind the Beacons goal then. Put loops up, they're still trying to get it under control, but Emma Dixon doing a good job. Ushering that one back to uh, Megan Craig. A, a note really on, uh, on Emma. She was known as Emma Painter, got married in the summer. Congratulations to her. And her husband, and she's now known as Emma Dixon. Face off then to the left of Megan Craig's goal. Won by Becky Castlewood. She's got uh, Katie Trachtenberg and Danielle on her line. Just seeing what happens here. Shot on the uh, near side, just pops off the chest of Megan Craig and back into play. It'll be come all the way back out. Sam Payne gathers, sends it rink wide. will be collected by her defensive partner, Kiva Parsons. Kiva, who was part of the London Capitals team, which won the under-16 championships two seasons ago. Oh, nice uh, play there by the Beacons to break that up. That was Emma Dixon, who's got Caitlin Stocks alongside her. Katie wins the puck back, and Danielle trying to control that. She's down on her knees at that stage. A number of the Beacons players are unavailable for this weekend, as the uh, Irish hockey team have got a, a two-game tournament in Dundonald near Belfast as they take on the uh, Caledonia Steel Queens so uh, as I say there'll be a few players missing here but the Beacons top line back out there and it's Ruby Newlands trying to feed Abby Coulshaw Abby Minters on the ice there in the red helmet easily identifiable one of the, the top two way centres in the game she's uh, got a great defensive style to her but also leads offensively as well she'll be playing with the Swindon Top Cats as well and but just fired at it, she'll collect off the boards and carries it into the offensive zone now. Nice setup play there, it was just a little bit behind her line mate coming in. I think it might have been Alice Jones. Out wide to Abby Coulshaw from Steph Towns. Puts in off the left wing and banks a shot off Josie Laney. Collected by Zara Berwick, who's been included in the GB under 18 roster once again. She uh, had a good tournament in Dumfries back in January. Yeah. 
Shot comes in from Ruby Newlands on the near side, but saved. And then it's it, scored. The Beacons have got the breakthrough. It's Becky Castlewood in the low slot. The play almost seemed to stop there, but she never gave up. And the pass from behind the net executed well by Becky Castlewood. The Beacons get the lead. And uh, Stevie Chavala, who's uh, got the start in net, who made a couple of appearances for the Beacons last season. So the Beacons with uh, their first lead of the season. And it's going to be Becky's line that will stay out there. off the boards, it's picked off by Beth Hill though. She slips a pass to Nikolaevich and she'll shoot again with the Croatian. Good save, big rebound, but uh, Megan Craig will cover that one up and hold on. We'll get a face off in the uh, beacon zone, but good response at by the Lightning who've gone straight on the attack, having given it that goal straight from the puck drop or we'll back on it. Work back, oh, heavy touch just sailed under the stick of Ellie Porter. We can sort of get in behind once again. It's Danielle Turnbull who scored a very memorable goal against the Lightning here two years ago, but it's at the other end of the ice. Collected by the Lightning. They'll charge out with Beth Hill. She is normally a D, but can play forward as well and has done on several occasions for the Lightning. Still only in her mid to late 20s, but had some experience to that lineup for what is a predominantly young team now. Margot Sia collects, nice hands, gets a shot off. Oh, forced to save from Megan Craig, just popped off the fingertips there. Margot, who's um, half Slovakian, half French. Cleared, comes out the zone. See Slovakia with a great uh, hockey pedigree. And then off the left wing, good play that by. Uh, I think it was Eddie Porter who was up from the back, but picked off by Abby Coulshaw. She will lead out. Nice play, though, by Guildford. And with Margot, I think that's going to be a penalty, though. Holding the stick, perhaps. But she did uh, make life uncomfortable for the GB International there, Abby Coulshaw. In fact, they're going to call both. So, uh, a coincidental penalty as Abby goes back there as well. So. Just over four minutes played then, and uh, penalty for each side. It means that both teams can remain at five skaters. That is the rule, the new rule that was brought in this summer. But for now, they've both only got four players on. Whitley do have now five skaters. Looks like Megan Singleton's going to come into the... Uh, the forward position in Abby Coulshaw's place with Steph Towns and uh, Ruby Newlands out there. Now Anya Kadayevich has been sent out there for Guildford. Um, puck stays inside the Guildford zone. It's a, the plexi steaming up a little bit here. It's still relatively warm outside for this time of year. Jess Jones carries in, gets a shot off. Oh, it wasn't far off. Target there, and they have scored now, though. Rebound come in, and the Lightning have tied it up. To say that initial shot from Jess Jones, I think it just flicked off the outside of Megan Craig's blocker. But as the play come back round, the second phase of play, it was fired home, and I think it was Sam Payne who got that one. But uh, great way to tie it up. That uh, coincidental penalty. Maybe disrupting the flow a little bit for the Beacons. But straight away, Danielle Turnbull on the attack. Great to see her back in the lineup. She was unavailable last weekend and she was a miss. So great to see her back on that second line with Becky Castlewood. And of course, Katie Trachtenberg, who's a new member on the Beacons for this season. Had a very good debut indeed at uh, Solly Hulters. Puck comes loose. I think Phoebe's just about covered that one up. Got the, the pad sitting on top of it. But a couple of sticks trying to go in there and work it free, but um, well, a good start to the game then. Both sides find in the back of the net early on, not quite five minutes played. And uh, well, could have the makings of a good game this, as I say, both sides looking to get a win early on in the season. 
Abby Minter will take the draw against Becky Castlewood. And it's the uh, Whitley centre who gets the shot off. Puck in the corner now. Guildford just trying to tie it up a little bit, but Becky will work it loose, and then Abby Minter comes in and steals it back. Great Hattons from the Swindon-born centre there. Becky low, back checks well, steals it back, and then Zara Berwick collects. And Zara, who had a really good tournament up in Dumfries, one of the younger players on the team as well. She celebrated her birthday a couple of days ago. And many happy returns, Zara. And was, uh, collected by Caitlin Stocks. Sorry, it's not, is it? It's... Um, Kendall van der Veen, I should say, number 52, and she hits the, the post there, the Canadian. And Caitlin, who wears uh, number 58, and plays the post of 52. Kendall having a different shirt number to last week as uh, Towns gets a shot off, comes off the heel of the stick of Ellie Porter, the former GB under 18 assistant captain. She was part of that successful side in Istanbul just over a year ago when GB won silver. Ruby Newlands controls the puck behind the back of the net with Zara Berwick closing her down and Zara steals it off her, gets it away, but it will be collected by the Beacons on the near boards. Apologies, I can't see who that was through the uh, steamed up. Lexi, it was uh, Kendall. So got player of the game last week in Solly Hull as she made a, a good start to her Beacons career. Steph Towns collects. Puck comes loose though. Shot comes in, it's saved by Megan. I think she just lost sight of where the puck had dropped, but she'll cover up and with a stoppage in play, it allows both Margot and Abby to return to the action. There'll be a face-off in the beacon zone to the right of Megan Craig's net as she looks at it, with the Becky Kastner wood line back out there. And it's... Uh, Lightning who come out with it. A lot of new... Faces in their lineup as well. Puck comes out the corner. And the Beacons looking to get a break on, just bounces away from Daniel Turnbull. She does well to get it back. Katie Trachtenberg tangling there with uh, Evie Lawrence, who centres his third line. Evie Lawrence, Miller Peroni, and uh, Izzy Zizinska, who scored a lot of goals for the Chelmsford Rattlesnakes in the under 16s league last year. Fantastic young player. Nice pullback there by the Lightning, but Megan Craig watched it and covered it up. And we'll get a face off in the beacon zone. But that third line for the Lightning then, bringing a lot of energy. Well, what they lack in uh, experience in the Elite League, they'll certainly bring a lot of energy to the lineup of uh, fast skating. Um, it's a, very much a new young team here for Guildford as they try and rebuild. Fort that. Whitley, Guildford and Kingston are going to be battling for that fourth playoff spot this season. So it'll be closer than we've seen in recent years. All the will come out the zone and Ruby Newlands will chase after it. She'll just about get there first. Collects it well, needs a bit of support here as she's eased into the corner. Work back, collected by Abby Coolshaw, trying to find Steph Towns. Ruby Newlands goes into the corner once again. Collected on the near boards. Slipped out wide to Anya Kadievic, who tried the dump in, but it's cleared. Comes back out and tries it a second time. Anya, who spent some time with the Kingston Diamonds. Oh, good shot from Beth Hill at the uh, from the point, just inside the offensive zone, and she uh, let fly with that one. Collected on the far side, fired back in. Dumped into the corner. Beth Hill will collect once again. Very much one of the uh, top defenders in this country. As I say, she plays for GB in that position, but is pretty handy on that top line as well. Last time the Lightning made the trip here, it was uh, Beth Hill who linked up well with Louise Adams and Zora Gottlebet. Well, two line mates on an occasion, no longer with the Lightning, but Beth still very much here and doing a sterling job. That is cleared by Steph Towns, which is a play out. Collected by Alice Jones. Tipped in by Margot Sear. And then collected by Caitlin Stocks. And on the far side, Abby Minter comes out with it. Good hands from her, gets a shot off, but Caitlin does a good job of blocking that shot with her feet. 
forces Abby to recycle back round, finds Alice Jones and then collected by Steph Towns. Good hands from the Whitley player coach. Nice pass out wide. Katie Trachtenberg will chase after that using that fast skating style that she's got. Will collect, cuts back, needs a bit of support here. The American-born player doing well. And then just outnumbered in the end, but good idea that, looking for that fast breakout. Clever idea by Steph. I say Katie very much a, a welcomed addition for this season. Or picked off by Beth Hill. Gets a shot off, but it was well read by the Beacons and Kendall van der Veen. And she'll clear again. Off the boards, comes back to May Sullivan, one of the, the new players for this season. Beth Hill's open, May will find her. Taken from behind and try to get it onto a forehand, but Katie Trachtenberg quick to steal the puck back. Put under pressure quickly there by Anja Kadijevic, so scores and slots it home past Megan Craig and the Lightning then with their first lead of the game. Steph Towns line back out there, just past the midpoint of its opening period. It's 2-1 Lightning. A reminder that the Lightning do still have some potent goal scoring threats. Anya, who I say had some time with Kingston. The last time the Beacons were in the Elite League two years ago, she was with the Diamonds, and prior to that had some time with the Bracknell Queen Bees. Sent around the boards. Eddie Porter will get there first, just ahead of Steph Towns. Can only find Abby Coulshaw, though, and the Darwin-born winger battling away along the boards. Nobody, nobody works harder than Abby Coulshaw. And she almost put that one off as well along the boards as Eddie Porter was able to clear. Only partially, though. Beth Hill has to drop back and help out, and she'll gather, look to try and build the play. Nice hands as she cuts onto her backhand, and then... Dumps in. Beacons will just about get it clear. May Sullivan gathers. Paul Shaw doing a good job, breaking the play up. Comes back through. Collected by Caitlin Morrison, who play, normally plays as a forward for, certainly for when she plays for Ireland, but has been used as a defender in the opening couple of games for the Beacons. Ruby Newlands plays it forward. And Guildford able to regather as both teams in the middle of a line change. Stolen back though by the beacon set up for Becky Castor Wood, whose shot is blocked well back there. Couldn't quite see who it was who got the uh, got the block. And it was well defended all the same. I think it was Kiva Parsons. Sent around the boards. Collected by Caitlin Stocks. A quick look over her shoulder before finding her defensive partner. Picked off by Sam Payne, who's going to get a shot at her. No, she was trying to feed Margot at the back post. It looked like she was going to get the shot away, and then Abby Minter follows up from distance, trying to fire through traffic. It just drifted wide in the end. She'll collect me on the back of the boards. Setting up the play, comes back to Parsons, who again gets crowded out. And she was just pulling the, the trigger there. Puck just sticking on the ice for Becky Castlewood. For what out of a reach of Sam Payne. Collected nicely by Katie Trachtenberg again, trying to make the play. Nobody had gone up with her, though. She'll go for the change then. That brings Ruby Newlands back onto the ice. Nice hands by Kendall van der Veen. Uh, just in front of Ruby, she'll let Steph Towns chase after that one. And shout out to Ruby's dad, Mark, who's tuning in from San Jose. And, uh, well, I hope you enjoy the Sharks game later on. Uh, nice bit of play there by Anja Kadijevic once again. Kendall van der Veen standing over up well. Ruby Newland's quick to win it back and feed uh, coach Steph Towns, who enters the zone, gets it in behind Zara Berwick. But Zara 
forcing Steph really to run out of real estate in that corner. Good defending by the youngster, sent into the low slot, but I think it just came off the back of Zara Skate, Zara Skate even. And it comes back out. Ooh, I think it just about kept in. No, the referee saying it had come out. I thought it had, but there seems to be a delay before um, the whistle was made. But um, Beacon's second line back out there then. This third line of the Lightning, Evie Lawrence centering it with Izzy Chisinska and Miller Peroni. Miller Peroni, who um, was with the Swindon Topcats and Bristol Huskies last season. She'll play with Bristol in Division 1 this year. Good young player. And so that one's dumped in. Becky Castle Wood stroking the puck out wide. Caitlin Morrison with a nice layoff to find Daniel Turnbull, who chased down that far side. Attempted poke check. And he caught up from the back. We'll get a shot on that, just flashes wide of Megan Craig's block aside. Puck sticking on Katie Trachtenberg. At Becky Castle Wood will gather now. She gets in behind because she gets the shot off. Oh, she just the puck just seemed to stick on him in the mid slot as she was about to release the shot. Oh, and then a shot from distance from I think it was uh, Vicky Smith who puck just bouncing wide of the goal, wasn't far off. Attempted wrap around perhaps, Katie Trappenville with the effort, forces Phoebe Chavala to cover up. So Phoebe who uh, played twice for the Beacons last season in their opening road trip, I seem to remember, almost a year ago, it was mid-October when the Beacons played the Fire Bees and uh, the Swindon Topcats, Phoebe winning both games for the Beacons on that occasion. Nice hands by Coulshaw, great effort from an acute angle. And I don't know where the puck ended up, but it, it got caught in some part of the equipment there. Phoebe just making sure it didn't drop and roll over the line. Well won by Steph Towns. That'll be Coulshaw along the boards. I'm going to apologise, folks, with the... Uh, condensation on the plexi it seems to be worse on this side as well which is typical Abby Minter sends it around the boards we collected by Alice Jones nice hands from her as she collects from the eye in the back of the net gets a, gets a shot off on the near post but Megan Craig having it covered oh and then it follow up shot sort of almost looped over and I think Megan might have got a piece of it just helped it on its way as Alice Jones trying to Play the puck back, stolen back though by Steph Towns and nice hands from her, collected by Caitlin Stocks. Who's, oh, puck just getting caught under the official skates there, but would have been a vital clearance. And Emma Dixon in there as well, so covered up by Megan Craig. The two Sheffield born defenders on the ice, the Sisters of Steel, as they were termed last season. Castlewood in for the draw. Guildford win it though when it comes through and with Beth Hill hovering, ready to pounce. That'll be covered up by Megan Craig. Of course, Megan made a one-off appearance for the Lightning two years ago as a, an emergency sort of uh, signing, loan signing. So both starting goaltenders have played for the other side at some stage over the last couple of years. Katie Trachtenberg with a pass out wide to Becky Castlewood. She'll chase down. Picked off by Beth Hill. Anya Kadievich gets in behind, gets a shot off, ripples the net, but it was behind the back of the goal frame. Work back to Jess Jones, flicked away by Danielle Turnbull. She'll push out. So it's asking a lot of both these lines. I say the beacons are short this week. We've just got two forward lines. Megan Singleton is available. There's a, another forward option. Nice hands by Becky Castlewood. Fires. Phoebe Chavalar couldn't keep it inside the glove, though. It spills loose. Becky will battle with two players along the boards with Katie Trachtenberg going in to help her out. But again, getting out number. Guildford getting a lot of two against one battles there. 
Collected at centre red by Rachel Stockdale. Katie leaves it for Abby Coolshaw. Coolshaw fires. Oh, it was just wide of a goal. It wasn't off by much. Just finding her range as the Whitley captain. Rachel Stockdale still up along those boards, trying to work it back clear from Jess Jones. So one of the top young left wingers in the country, really, Jess Jones. Good to see her back. It playing in this country after that year abroad. Margot Sia cuts in off the right wing. Good hands from her as well. Fires, hits the goal frame. And that's another tremendous young talent as well. Abby Minter's effort gets blocked by Ruby Newlands, I think. And Seth Towns will push out. Good control from her. Cuts back one way and then the other. Gets a shot off on the turn, but strikes the base of the goal frame. Both sides created a lot of efforts in what has been an entertaining opening period of hockey. Abby Mint enters his own fires, forces her good friend Megan Craig into the glove save. Megan will hold on. And we're going to face off in the beacon zone with a little under two minutes remaining in this opening period. Becky Custer Woods line will stay out there. Well, they're saying that uh, we try to bring it Evie Lawrence in, in in place of Abby Minter, but the uh, official was just saying there, no, it's uh, too late, we'll have to bring her back out. Too late to make the change. Up along the boards, comes back out. Collected by Becky Castlewood. We'll find Megan Singleton. Collected, though, by Caitlin Morrison. She's got Vicky Smith. Alongside her. Vicky, you seems to have a different defensive partner each week, but one of the real unsung heroes of the club gets on with it. Such a great campaigner. Doing well along the blue line as well. Evie Lawrence comes in, gets a shot off and scores. Uh, I think Megan was uh, unsighted there as it went top shelf. The Guildford down with a 3-1 lead. So, with a little over a minute remaining in this first period, we'll go back to centre ice. And we're back underway, Lightning in control with some pain off the boards. Adievich on her knees there, she was trying to control the puck. It'll be played on, Lawrence gathers, Caitlin Stocks goes with her. Collected off the boards, back to Abby Coolshaw, who tried to feed Ruby Newlands, but Sam Payne defends well. And the cross, bit of a slow change there from the Lightning, but didn't affect them as Coolshaw works it back to Painter. Left Towns with a pass out. Oh, goes through the, the feet of Ruby Newland. She couldn't control. He gathered by Beth Hill and then collected by Emma Dixon on the far side. Chuck comes in. Chavala makes a save and then a quick release. Collected by Evie Lawrence. Off the board to Alice Jones. Helped on its way by, I think, a deflection. Slows down by Kendall van der Veen. That well, will do it then for the opening period, a, a period that saw the Beacons take an early lead. But um, Guildford quickly back level and then now hold a 3-1 lead. We're going to take a short break. Be back with you in around about three minutes' time. Please don't go anywhere.
Welcome back to Hillhead Zen. As the Guildford Lightning currently have a 3 1 lead over the Whitley Bay Beacons. Katie Trachtenberg would like me to thank her major sponsors Rick Johnson, Mom and Dad, a travel sponsor, Randy Episcopo, training sponsor, Don Stockley, and all of her friends and family who uh, always support her. We are just about ready for the start of the second period. Anja Karijevic wins the draw, gets it back to Eddie Porter, but then Ruby Newland's mixing things up, trying to break the play up. Jess Jones along there as well, the Beacons winger, trying to work it back. It's dumped in by Beth Hill, who will close down. Caitlin Morrison gathers. Under a reach of Ruby Newlands, who will chase right in front of her own bench. Lightning in a decent position here with a two goal lead. We've obviously got the extra legs as well at third line. Beacons have got seven forwards and six deep. Vicky Smith controls. Over onto a far side, comes back out. Ruby Newlands gathers off the left wing boards. Will enter his own. He's got Seth Towns up there with her. Ruby just firing wide of the goal frame. Wasn't off by much. Emma Dixon's pass is closed down by Beth Hill. She'll enter his own. Fires. Fingertip saved by Megan Craig. And she'll cover up the rebound with a little over a minute played in this second period. And we'll get a face off in the beacon zone. Be the Abby Minter line that will stay out there for the Lightning. But Margot Sears is going to take the draw against Becky Castlewood. And it's Guildford who will come out and control. Over onto a fast side. Collected by Margot, trying to feed Alice Jones. She'll Get it to well on that uh, cut that corner there, but Emma Dixon trying to break the play up. Margo quick to break the play up once again, steal it back. Gets a shot off and scores, and it's 4-1 Guildford. A fantastic effort there by Margo. seconds played at the start of a second period 4-1 to the Guildford line and Jamie Briggs to drop the puck and get us back underway Javier Minter steals back in fires wide of a goal comes back cannons back off the boards and then Katie Trachtenberg will clear the zone collected in the neutral zone by Sam Payne and switches the play to in front of her own bench but battle along the boards it will just about come loose but call from Margot for from Alice Jones and then Abby Minter trying to set her up in the mid slot. Guildford weaving some good patterns across the ice here. Almost seemed like uh, giving up that early goal to the Beacons is what woke them up and they've taken their chances well. Some uh, really good efforts actually, really good individual pieces of skill for the goals. Worked back by Katie Trachtenberg and stolen back again. That's, they're going to say high stick. So on Katie, but uh, I thought it was a good defensive t uh, challenge myself. But Mr. Ellis thinking otherwise. But uh, well, it appeared as though Katie had won the puck back well in a back checking well, but. Um, Say it gives Skillford their first power play opportunity of the uh, of the game, but I'm not the only one who thinks that. As I can see, uh, my colleague operating the cameras uh, agreeing with me. Couldn't couldn't quite understand that call. As um, the challenge by Abby Coulshaw, who runs her opponent over, and you could argue that was more of a of a uh, punishable offence. That uh, thankfully Abby not getting called for that one. She'll dump in. Collected in the far corner. 
Abby Gosher on the far side. Nice play by Beth Hill as she strides forward. Drop pass picked off by Abby Coulshaw. Those two know each other well from GB, of course. That's dumped in. Eddie Porter gets there just ahead of Steph Towns, who enters the offensive zone. But Eddie's got time to play the puck forward to Beth Hill, who's certainly got more responsibility offensively with Louise Adams no longer there. Shot comes in, sails through the crease. Guildford work in the corner as well. So on the power play here, of course. Kick saved by Megan Craig. Saw it late as well. It was a good clearance. Puck comes through with a bit of uh, ice trailing it as well. Hill re-enters the zone. Beacons have done a good job here, though. Not really letting Guildford settle. They uh, killed off five penalties last week at Solihull which is no mean feat given the array of talent they have going forward there's our little helpers are clearing the uh, the plexi which is great I think that's uh, Danielle Turnbull's brother and sister I could be mistaken shot comes through through traffic deflected with a high stick I think May Sullivan saying he comes back to full strength Evie Lawrence switching the play, it's closed down, be gathered. Work back. Katie Trachtenberg with a pass out of D. Directed by Steph Towns. Puck almost getting away from her, but gathered it in nicely as she dragged back. Will dump in, forces Phoebe Chavala to cover up and that gives the Beacons their first offensive zone face-off for some time. So clever bit of play there by the Whitley player coach. Katie Trachtenberg will take the draw. Becky Castlewood just to her left. The American ushers it back to Emma Dixon, who sends it around the boards for Becky Castlewood. Work back. With Caitlin Stocks, who will gather. Danielle Turnbull on the far side. With Stocks again, who's pinching in from the back. Got an assist last weekend away at uh, Solihull as she set up Ruby Newlands. Well, sent her scampering away. But, uh, good assist to have early on in the season as Margot darts down this left wing. Nice hands from her trying to set up Alice Jones and then the shot comes back through for Margot who's everywhere right now. This is uh, what they say in America, a coming out party. I think this is hers. She's uh, been on fire in the first half of this game already. Collected behind the back of a net. As Caitlin Stocks ties Margo up, but the uh, youngster will just about break free, try to find some pain. It's tipped by Becky Castlewood, who charges out. She'll get there first. Can she get a shot off? She gets into the control, fires, but kick save by Phoebe Chavala helps it on its way into the corner. Sent through into the mid slot to Danielle Turnbull. Collected by Sam Payne, she'll blast around the boards. Kendall van der Veen gathers and sends it back. Kendall, who's one of the new signings for this season, Canadian born player, based up in Scotland. Back to Abby Minter. Collected by Steph Towns. That'd be cool, short. And over on the far boards, it's uh, two players from each side. There is a stick, I think, lying prone down there. Well, the butt end of a stick from a Guildford player. A blasted clear, collected by Kendall van der Veen, who keeps it inside the blue line. Some sustained pressure is from the Beacons. 
Abby Coulshaw gathers. Finds Steph Towns. Comes back through. Collected off the back of a heel by Van der Veen and then finds Steph Towns who's worked some space for herself. It's a three on one rush here. Poke check from Josie Lamey forces Steph wide. Can only fire beyond the back of the net. Abby Coulshaw fires. Popped up off the blocker from Phoebe. Cleared by Zara Berwick. As Katie Trachtenberg works it back. Nice drop pass found Ruby Newlands in the low slot, but blocked. It's going to be a penalty here. It's going to be on the Guildford Lightning. Trachtenberg attempted wrap around, tried to squeeze it home on the glove side, but we'll get that whistle now. So a first power play opportunity for the Beacons. And it's Margot who's going to go and sit for two minutes. And that's an important player to have off the ice from the Beacons' point of view. Katie Trachtenberg is waiting for the face-off. Looks like she is going to take the draw. She's got Danielle Turnbull, Becky Castor, Ward, Steph Towns and Abby Coulshaw out there. So, gone with five forwards here. Popped up from Castor Wood's shot and then a big rebound. She tried to find Danielle Turnbull. It just fell behind her. That was a good opportunity right for the Beacons. Very nearly con converting after about five seconds of the power play. Steph Towns once again, out wide, finds Abby Coulshaw. Abby trying to force her way back in the zone, but good defending that from May Sullivan, preventing her illustrious opponent from going in. Becky Castlewood will carry in this time, though. She looks up, sees what's around, a nice drop past the Towns. Winds one up for Coulshaw, who scores! Abby Coulshaw with her first goal of the season, and it cuts the score to four goals to two. So the Beacons power play converting. And uh, the Beacons with something of a foothold back in the game now. And Abby Coulshaw smiling like a, a butcher's dog there as she went back to the bench. She was happy with that goal. Steph Tons. Goes in for the draw. Sanya Kadievich comes out with it. Puck just falling behind Ruby Newlands, but Steph Towns comes in, fires, causes a kick save out of Phoebe Chavalar, but she's able to gather it back in with a quick use of the stick and the glove. But uh, Beacon straight on the attack there, trying to get themselves another goal. If they can get another one back here, they're well and truly back in the contest. One by Steph Towns, but it's seized upon by Jess Jones. Good hands from her as she. Darts one way, then the next goes down that left wing channel. Got some support with Beth Hill, who's going to work it behind the net. Still, still has control of it, shoots, but pops straight into the glove for a very grateful Megan Craig. 10.50 to go in the second period. Uh, that goal should bring a bit more confidence back to the Beacons after giving up four straight goals. Interesting that they have switched things around on this line with Katie taking the face-off draws and Becky going out to the wing. It's a position Becky's played many times in the past, particularly last season when she played on the top line with Steph and, Ab uh, Steph and Abby, so um, it's not unfamiliar to her. Katie obviously played as a centre for Solway last season. Shot comes in, pops into the bread basket once again for Megan Craig to hold on to. Guildford, who had a respectable 6-3 defeat against Solihull at the start of the season. And then went down 7-0 to Streatham. Oh, big rebound. Jess Jones almost ready to bounce, but Megan Craig will cover up. As Guildford will make the line change. It's going to be Izzy Zizinska to take the, the draw. Family, I believe, are from Poland originally, but uh, scored a lot of goals for the Chelmsford Rattlesnakes, as I say, as uh, she helped lead her team to the playoffs last year. And he narrowly losing to uh, the Kingston Diamonds in the semi finals, who were, went on to win the championship. But Izzy, with a uh, very offensive threat. Emma Dixon doing a good job along the board, just sign the puck up. 
comes back loose. It'll be capitalised by Becky Castlewood, who's got Katie up there with her. Good effort by Becky, who shot first time, forces the blocker save from Phoebe, popped up and just out of Katie's reach, but the American was looking to try and convert, and Danielle Turnbull doing a good job of cycling the puck back round to her. Nice hands by Kendall van der Wiener. Shots charged down by one of two Guildford players. And then Danielle Turnbull trying to work it. Sam Payne doing a good job sticking with her. Danielle needs a bit of support here. She's got two players with her, but I think both were looking to see if the puck was going to come out rather than go in and just uh, close the play up along the boards. Collected by Sullivan, I think it was, on the far side. Kendall van der Veen turns, does well. Nice hands from the Canadian. Who comes from Meaford, Ontario, gets a shot off and then forces Phoebe to cover up. This is much better play by the Beacons, who are growing back into the game. And at the midpoint, they're going to change goalies and it's going to be Marley Easton who comes in. So I would imagine that was a pre-arranged uh, plan that they'd give both goaltenders half a game each or thereabouts. It'll be just over half that Phoebe's played. Marley Easton, known as the Wall. Comes back to Abby Coulshaw fires a high glove save early on. So Marley warming the glove up straight away. Margot with the draw against Steph Towns, and it is the youngster who comes out with it. Pup takes a weird bounce off the boards, forces Marley to play it behind her. And Steph Towns, sorry, Abby Coulshaw even in the far corner will turn it over to Ruby Newlands. Gets almost gets caught in possession there. Rose Alice Jones was just about on her toes as she received that pass. Shot comes in. Marley will turn it aside. But um, Ruby's brought down there. Always interesting when you do make these decisions because obviously Phoebe had had a really strong start to a game and you, you never want to sort of make a change, bring a new goalie in cold, as it were. It's always a bit of a gamble in that respect, but obviously the fairest thing to do when you have got two strong goalies like Guildford have. Abby with a nice drag back, but then Josie Lamy getting the puck on it. Most experienced player on this Guildford side now. Nice pass by Coulshaw to find Towns, who drifts out wide onto the left wing. Oh, it's got outnumbered once again. Margot wins it back and finds Beth Hill, who gets the shot off. It pops out from the save of Megan Craig. Wonder what sort of momentum change that will bring for Guildford with uh, the change in goalie. So usually you make a change when uh, the starting goalie has perhaps had a few in, but uh, I say it's a different sort of game in that respect as Kadijevic cuts in off the left wing. Nice drag back, could get it behind Caitlin Sock and scores. And that was a that goal was a thing of beauty as she danced through the Beacons defence and slots home and restores a free goal lead. Anya Kadijevic then with uh, with that some filthy moves there from Anya, but a uh, great finish. as Megan Craig having a chat with Becky Castlewood there. Becky was very good at uh, talking to her teammates and working on their confidence. Not that Megan particularly needs it. She's an outstandingly talented goalie, but uh, always nice to see Becky in there supporting her teammates the way she does as Caitlin Stocks gathers. Porter through to Kadijevic. Poke check from Emma Dixon. Falls just behind Jess Jones. Nice hands from Becky Castlewood, who's had that full array of talent and skill today. She's done it fantastically well, Becky. Open the score in. Looked dangerous throughout. Finds Megan Singleton. Another one of the new players. Made her debut last weekend in Solihull. One of seven players to make their debut, in fact, as Beth Hill feeds Kadijevic. Born in Zagreb. I say, spent a number of years over in the UK now. Had some time in Canada as well, I believe, as Puck comes back through. Collected by Marley Easton, who will set it up for Ellie Porter. Banked off the boards. Collected by Emma Dixon. 
Outnumbered again, though, as Margot Sia comes in. They're going to say that's offside. It would have been either Alice Jones or Abby Minza, who was uh, called as being in the offside position. Couldn't quite see which one it was. Might even have been both, but uh, either way, I think they just advanced ahead of the puck handler. So face-off will take place outside of the beacon zone. Steph Towns will take the draw. Mr Ellis marking the spot where he's going to drop the puck. And indeed does so to precision. And Steph Towns will play the puck out wide to the left wing. Abby Coulshaw darts down there, gets in behind the cover in D. She's going to get outnumbered here. Steph Towns goes in to help her out. So Abby Coulshaw tries to work it back free, but Abby Minter doing that good defensive shutdown role that she's uh, excellent at. Again, goes into the corner, collected by Steph Towns to Coulshaw. Beacon cycling it down low. Margot Sear doing a great job, though, again, breaking the play up. Collected off the boards, kick save, comes back out. Abby Minter tries to crush it home. Got bodies back there. It's come back loose once again. Whistle's gone. Then I think they're going to say it was a goal. I didn't actually see it go in. There's the puck now as Megan retrieves it. I didn't see who put it home, but I did see the official point into the back of the net. I, to be honest, I don't even think Guildford celebrated. I don't think they realised it had gone in initially. But it's now 6 2. And the Beacons home open not exactly gone to plan then. It's a, a tough return to the top flight. Welcome to all the people listening in, tuning in for this one. We welcome your support wherever you are tuning in from. I'm sure Casey Trail will be watching this at some point, whether live or retrospectively. But I hope all is going well for you in Sweden and we wish you all the very best of luck and can't wait to have you back in a Beacons jersey, hopefully later this season. Collected by Steph Towns and Caitlin Morrison will clear. Clears, comes back for Josie Lamy. Out wide to Miller Peroni. Peroni works it back. To Lamy once again, Lamy, who's one of the two GB under 16 girls coaches, along with uh, Nikki Wardell of uh, of these parts. Local local girl is Nikki. As Nikki Smith works it back to Cool Shaw now, receiving the puck from Caitlin Morrison. Cleared, comes back, out of a reach of Shizinska, but that was Nikki Smith to regather. Caitlin Morrison goes again. Work back to Danielle Turnbull. Dumped in. Over into the corner. Katie Trachtenberg works it back. Sarah Berwick goes in the corner. But still along the boards. It's been... Uh, Collected by Katie. Caitlin Stocks with good hands, fires. She was uh, shifted her weight just onto her right foot as she released that, but managed to get some good power in it and forces Marley Eason into a save with just under four minutes to go in this second period. Uh, 6 2 to the Lightning then. Ellie Porter will regather. Over to the far side. Beth Hill almost getting caught in possession there. In fact, she was as Emma Dixon had her tied up. Shot comes through and kick save. Big rebound from Marley Easton, but then did the splits as she made the follow up save and stopped. I think it was Katie Trachtenberg with a follow up shot. Or was it Megan Singleton? One of the two was cutting off the left wing. And it will allow the Face off to remain in the Guildford zone. Kadievich with a huge cutback that forced Marley Eason into a save there. It was her own player who swiped it back. That would have been quite an unusual uh, own goal. Well, a goal if it had gone in, of course. It's uh, uh, not no such thing as an own goal in hockey, but um, 
Would have been interesting to see who would have been credited with that. Had it had gone in, but Marley was alert and made the save. Is Carla Jones makes a save. One of three players with that surname on the team. Cycling the put down low for Guildford. Beth Hill works it back. May Sullivan was calling for it there, but it would have been an optimistic pass to have picked her out from there, I think. Puck up along the boards. Emma Dixon trying to work it back free, and Beth Hill's there still with Anya Kadievich, the pair of them doubling up on her. Oh, good challenge that by. It was Katie Trachtenberg who just got something on that shot, blocked it, allowed Megan to make the save. Shot from May Sullivan, pops up, I think that. Come off Katie as well, blocked two efforts there. Worked back. Guildford still with possession. Helped on its way by Cara Jones. Still with Cara, works it back to May Sullivan, fires through traffic and scores. And that was a pinpoint accuracy there from, from May Sullivan, who went top shelf. There's no way Megan was going to save that high above the blocker. It's, uh, I guess the one, the last place in the world you, a goalie wants to have a shot. But uh, it was well executed by May Sullivan, and that makes it 7 2. Ruben Newlands works it back to the D, which was Kendall van der Veen, and then Abby Coolshaw cuts in. Abby Minter doing a good job there, steals it back once again. Such a hard working player, she darts down the right wing, never gives up. And then uh, slips it forward to Margot, and then gets a follow up shot. Abby, she certainly. Deserves a goal from her exploits today. Ruby Newlands finds Steph Towns, works it back to Kendall. Out wide to Abby Coolshaw. Finds Ruby Newlands up in space. Beautiful pass and a great take by Ruby. Finds Steph Towns. It was on her backhand and it was, uh, I think, from that angle, she was never going to score, but Abby Coolshaw has. And she rifles that one home with some venom to cut the lead to seven to three. But some uh, great play, really. It was a move was started by Abby to pick out Ruby with what was arguably the pass of the game. And uh, the pair combining well. And then Steph as well playing her part in the second phase of play. In less than a minute in the period, it's Guildford seven, Whitley three. So, Alice Jones controls. I believe it was 8-4 to Guildford the last time these two sides met. Not inconceivable we could have the same scoreline again here today. As we get a whistle on the plate. Of course, as I say, the second game never took place due to the damage on the roof. But, uh, Rachel Stockdale's been called for a penalty there, and it looks like former goalie Jess Kinghorn on uh, gate duty in the penalty box. So, Beacons ending the period on the penalty kill for that hooking call. Fired into the boards. Caitlin Morrison will control and dump in. No hockey for the girls next weekend then, as there's going to be a GB camp. So allows both sides a chance to regroup. Beth Hill up along the boards. Kadievich, nice hands, deeks round. Caitlin Morrison gets his shot off. It's a second power play opportunity of a game, Guildford. There's Carla Jones sends it around the boards, collected by Morrison. Buzzer goes, and that will do it for the second period. Uh, one where 
Guildford have increased their lead and hold a commanding position as we go into the final period. Will's going to take a short break. Please don't go anywhere. Welcome back to Hillheads then for the start of the third and final period as the Guildford Lightning currently lead seven goals to three. Marley Easton came into the game just under nine minutes remaining in that second period, so she'll be in net for the uh, conclusion of this game. Looks like the lines have been mixed up a bit here for the start of the third period for Guildford. Anya Kadievich is out there with Carla Jones and Beth Hill. Oh, Carla will just be rotating in, I guess, as Abby Coulshaw works it back. We'll find Caitlin Morrison. Stretch pass from Coulshaw, tipped on by Towns. Collected on the back of a net by Caitlin Morrison, who's up from the back. Banked off the boards. May Sullivan with a nice layoff, but it's picked up by Steph Towns, who fired from uh, the point. Oh, and then uh, Abby Coulshaw's just been run over there by, was it Ellie Porter? I didn't quite see who it was, but um, officials said it was fine when she i say it wasn't called, but um, 
I say you maybe you'd expect it would have been in that circumstance, but either way, the beacon still got some work to do on this penalty kill. Shots blocked. Tipped in, Kiva Parsons will get there first with 20 seconds left on this Guildford power play. Abby Minter will find Margot Sear. Collected at centre red by Sam Payne. Mr. Wood will gather. And carries up on these near boards. Becky Castle Wood is running out of real estate there as she's bundled over. Drop pass. As Guildford will advance up the other end of the ice. It's cleared by Caitlin Stocks. Allows Katie to push out. She'll chase, gets in behind Josie Lamy. Somebody's lost a stick. It's Beth Hill who retrieves the, the timber before stealing the puck back. Some of the Whitley fans feel that the officials have missed a couple of uh, calls there, but. Um, Certainly the first one on Abby Corshaw, so it looked like she'd been run over. Vanya Kadievich controls. Ruby Newlands, who's been quiet by her standards, really. Out wide. She'll join the rush now with uh, Steph Towns, who's shots blocked. Abby Corshaw, it is, who controls. In the corner, works it back for Steph Towns who fires straight into a bread basket. Marley will hold on. Face off will take place to the right of Marley's net as she is looking at it. Sent around the boards, Ruby Newlands will gather. She's controlled up along the boards by May Sullivan, although she's quick to release her. Dumped in. Kendall van der Veen comes across. As well. She's gonna take responsibility here and charge up the ice, and that's one of Kendall's great uh, tricks, really. Good puck carrier, and uh, when she gets in full steam like that and releases her shot, it's uh, pretty hard to stop. Steph Towns will control in the neutral zone. Works back to Kendall. Nice tape to take past to Ruby Newlands and Steph, but Beth Hill just doing enough to slow Steph down. A GB teammate that's dumped in. Steph will. Use the opportunity for her line to make the change. Always difficult when you've only got two lines out there as well, of course, as Danielle Turnbull trying to bring a bit of momentum there, put just out of her reach. But Becky Castor Wood will usher it back to Caitlin Morrison. Guilford will get it away. With uh, Izzy Jasinska looking to get the break on. There's Caitlin Morrison up there operating almost as a full forward at times now. And Shot comes in, and uh, I was on the glove side. It was a routine save for Marley. Almost five minutes played in this third and final period. Still 7-3 to the Lightning. Pucks up along the boards. It's a dead puck. No one's intending really to play it, and then the Beacons will work it. Three with Katie and then Caitlin Morrison over there. Exchange of words perhaps on those near, oh, sorry, on those far boards between, okay, uh, between Caitlin Morrison and uh, the Guildford player. That strikes the base of the goal frame, comes back round. As, uh, Puck advances towards the Guildford bench. Katie Trachtenberg trying to work it free. Out of reach of Miller Peroni, she'll chase after it though, will get in behind Vicky Smith. Nice centering pass actually, and it's cleared by Megan Craig, and then Katie having to block it as well. 
Guildford applying the pressure in the offensive zone once again as Caitlin Morrison will dig it out the corner. Becky Castlewood off the boards over to Danielle Turnbull. Kiva Parsons all control. Nice pass forward. Miller Peroni again centres but picked off by Steph Towns who holds on to possession. Nice pass to Caitlin Morrison into space. Gets an early shot on. But swatted away by Marley Easton. Cool short. Will drop back. We'll score twice today. Shot comes in. It comes off the blocker, I think, Marley. Will show up along the boards. And Margot doing a good job turning one way and the next. She's got to be a contender for play of the game, surely. Sent around the boards. Oh, just took a funny bounce on Emma Dixon as she was about to control. And then Abby Minter steals it off her. Centres into the low slot and uh, player coming through there. Almost got a the final touch. It was Alice Jones who almost uh, got on the end of that one. So the Anya Kadaevich line stays out there against uh, the Becky Castle Woodline. He's gone back to centre. Deflection goes into the side netting. Guildford working it back free, and Daniel Turnbull will gather. Banks off the boards, it will come out. Closed down by Becky Castle Wood. Kendall Van der Veen. Collects off the near boards as well there. Takes it around three players and then works some space for herself. It's a two-on-two two here. Shoots straight at Marley Easton, though she'll hold on. But it was a fiercely driven effort. And it's one outside an offensive zone face-off. Face-off will take place to the left of Marley Easton's net as she is looking at it. Jess Jones advances, she's got Beth Hill up there, but she'll hold on. Finds Beth. And then the return pass, swatted away by Megan Craig. Beth Hill will gather beyond the net once again. That pass went through the crease, comes back out and then followed up from distance and fired wide by May Sullivan. To the corner and then the Beacons will come out with it with Kendall comes out the zone but Beth Hill will tip in before she goes for the line change Kendall van der Veen will regather nice pass to Danielle Turnbull and then Seth Towns trying to get the puck under control Kendall from the centre red will dump in Allows the Beacons to make or complete their line change with about 11 minutes to go then. Abby Minter strides forward, bursts through one challenge, deeks to the left, fires just behind the back of a goal. They hurt and Megan, good friends, they both went out to uh, an elite training camp in Finland uh, in the summer of 2022, which benefited them both. Margot Sia. Advances, Ooh, tries to cut through the D. Steph Towns it was with the final challenge, I think. Just did enough to win the puck back. Margot gets there first. I know she's been a uh, young prospect for a couple of years, Margot, but she's certainly going to have the opportunity to play more often, I think, this season. And that extra ice time is paying dividends already. She's been uh, a great talent out there today. Caitlin Morrison keeps the puck up along the boards. Eva comes in. Sorry, Evie Lawrence even it was who came in to uh, win that one back. 
past the midpoint of the final period and Ruby Newlands tried to pick out Steph Towns but she was well marshalled by Kiva Parsons and uh, Izzy Jasinska. Face-off will take place to the left of Marley's goal. Katie Trachtenberg will take the draw, wins it. Back to Becky Castler-Wood. Fires just wide of a goal, wasn't off by much. Josie Lamey will control. Becky Castler-Wood steals it back. Thinks about the shot, she will. Oh, and again, it forced Marley to uh, raise her blocker, try to help it on its way. I'm not sure if she got a piece of it or not, but wasn't over by much. Jasinska cuts in off the wing. Blocker saved by Megan Craig, pushes it away. Caitlin Stocks with some good stick handling to get that one away and Katie will fly past the D, Kosa cut back inside but again outnumbered, Jasinska was back there to clear. Evie Lawrence trying to advance, nice poke check by Caitlin, just keeps it outside the zone and then that'll be whistled for an offside, so good play by Caitlin. Just under nine minutes to go. 7-3 to Guildford. Steph Towns line will be back out there once again. Kadievich with a win. Comes back, will be gathered by the Beacons. And Rachel Stockdale. Ruby Newlands forward to Steph Towns, who looks to get in behind Kadievich, and she will do. But Beth Hill comes across and cuts off her GB teammate and then looks to advance herself. Gets past Stockdale's challenge. Kendall comes across and forces Beth to fire wide. Not by much, though, it has to be said. Collected by the Beacons and Van Der Veen, and then forward to Ruby Newlands, who helps the clearance on its way. Collected by Ruby once again. She's got Abby Coulshaw with her if she spots her. She finds her, fires, or oh, kick saved by Marley. That was a hat-trick marker on the end of her stick right there. But a kick save from Marley Easton to prevent that from happening as Kendall van der Veen, I think, just uh, she stand on Beth Hill's stick. That's what brought her down. I'm not quite convinced it was a trip, but um, certainly was enough to bring her down. the boards comes back to Alice Jones who got round Steph Towns the first time couldn't the second and then Margot gets the loose puck fires and it's saved high up by Megan Craig who will hold on face off to take place to a right of Megan's net Katie Trachtenberg wins and plays it into space for Vicky Smith she has time to uh, control, but not much before Abby Minter and then Margot Sia come in and outnumber her and force a turnover. Margot collecting the puck, the, the Guildford Lightning cycling the puck down low very well here. Nice play from behind the back of the net. Tried to feed Margot once again in that low slot. Abby Minter in the high slot, she couldn't gather for this second line, doing a lot of damage for the Lightning. Puck comes loose, Went through the crease, but another solid save by Marley. She's just checking, I think, the goal frame's still on, because it did look like she there was a collision. I'm not sure it was her or coming together of a couple of players. Caitlin Morrison. So that'd be cool, sure. He darts down the left wing, cuts in behind, gets a shot off and... Scores, it has been given. Abby looked confident it had gone in. Marley had lost sight of it. She wasn't sure where it was. There was a delay before a reaction, but Abby Coulshaw has got an elite league hat trick. And it's a very well deserved one as well. So, seven goals to four. Abby's going to go again. And she got a four for herself. Test 
Marley there who's juggling with it then. Oh, I think it come loose. I thought it was heading towards goal. Seth Towns was certainly trying to pounce. It sort of um, took a weird bounce off the, the blade of Marley's stick and almost looped up over and she was just trying to get it under control but it was just out of her reach, agonisingly out of her reach. The whistle's gone though and um, we're going to face off in the Guildford zone. Bejevic will gather. And then loses her foot in as she played the puck at the boards. Harbour Jones helping it on its way, but Guildford regain possession anyway, deep in their zone. Ruby Newland's getting caught in the high slot between two Guildford players. Collected by Caitlin Stocks, but stolen off her by Beth Hill. And she'll use that lightning pace to get in behind and fires over. Megan Craig forcing her to fire over. Big follow-up from Anya Kadejevic. She will make the stop again. Good double save out by Megan Craig. Collected nicely by Kadejevic. Tries to set up Carla Jones and then Ellie Porter. Puck just taking a deflection went through the crease, but cleared by Megan. She got a piece of it. Then Ruby. Trying to get in behind. She'll have to go to low this time. Fires straight at Marley, though. But uh, certainly a good effort by the youngster. Oh, he was looking a bit frustrated out there. I think it's obviously the game's not gone the way the Beacons were hoping. Katie Trachtenberg gets tied up after the puck drop that steals it back. Abby Mintz has brought down, but uh, again, no call. I don't think it was much of one, but Becky Castor Wood has tipped that one home. Right on the doorstep, right in front of the crease. And uh, Becky Castor Wood knows how to gamble in situations like that. And she was expecting the puck to go there. It's her intelligence of knowing where the puck will come. and. Um, she was able just to tip that one underneath Marley Easton to make this a two-goal game with a little under five minutes to go. Well won by Steph Towns. Abby Coulshaw to feed Ruby Newlands. It was a short shift by the second unit of the Beacons, but they got the job done and got the goal. Abby Minter sends it around for Kendall van der Veen. Almost getting caught in possession there by Abby Minter, but able to get the puck out to Abby Coulshaw, who will release Ruby Newlands. Good poke check by Sam Payne, though, and it was a vital one because if Ruby had got in behind then, she was away and there was no catch in it. Abby Coulshaw works it back to Kendall. Out wide to Steph Towns. It was force a GB player to readjust, and then Kiva Parsons helps it over the, the boards and into the Zamboni entrance. 4.15 to go. Katie Traxenberg will take the face off for the Beacons. Up against Anya Kadijevic. Two of the imports out on the ice. Nice play by first Vicky Smith and then Caitlin Morrison. Controlled though by Guildford in their zone. Traxenberg, nice hands from her, trying to get it loose. We'll Carry it herself, drop pass to find Danielle Turnbull. And then Anya Kadijevic works it free, a quick breakout here. Beth Hill couldn't control as Caitlin Morrison steals the puck off her. In front of the Beacons bench, Becky Castor Wood, who's on a hat trick herself now, of course. Katie Trachtenberg squeezes along the boards behind two challenges, still with her, works it back, almost steered on net. In fact, I think it came off a Guildford player and then the puck from distance. Bounces just wide of the goal. Beacons throwing the kitchen sink at Guildford here. And Katie, oh, it was a heavy touch maybe. I think she was trying to pick out Danielle Turnbull in that low slot. But I think she, in the end, she was well defended anyway. But again, Beacons trying to capitalise on this momentum. Towns fires. Glove saved by Marley. She'll hold on. 
and we'll get a face off with 3.03 left in the game. Face off then to the right of Marley's net. Won by Steph Towns. It's sent into a low slot. Ruben Yunus has gone down, there's a whistle on the plate. I'm saying somebody's in the crease. I say, look, more than anything, look like Steph had brought Ruby down, but um, so there was no chance of uh, a tripping call, but I think it was a call for a skate in the crease. One by Steph Towns, work out of Coolshaw's reach. Beacons will have to try and go again. It's May Sullivan who plays it along to Ellie Porter with Caitlin Stocks regathering. Which is a play with Abby Minter closing her down, almost picked that one off. So she's had a really strong game once again, Abby Minter. Coolshaw turns, goes back the other way, carries up these near boards, gets in behind, Margot see it, darts towards goal, fires, comes off a Guilford player, rebound, but then it's gloved by Marley Easton. She'll hold on with 2.22 to go. That was a good shift that by the Beacons top line. Fast breakout, forced Marley into the save. And they'll get the offensive zone face off once again. Frachtenberg trying to feed Becky Castlewood in that low slot once again. Beth Hill with a nice quick pass out wide left. As they'll try and uh, get the break down that left wing side. Wilford carried into a corner. Good play by Daniel Turnbull, who's going to work it free, and then a low glove save by Megan Craig with 1.58 to go. Face off to take place from the left hand side of Megan Craig's net as she's looking at it. Tracy Trachtenberg with the draw. Almost stolen in by Becky Castor Wood. Sam Payne was there, though. Put goes into a corner. Worked back out quickly by Guilford and Kadijevic. Still with the Croatian, good hands from her. Tried to feed Beth Hill down low and then covered by Megan Craig once again. A minute 40 to go. Beacon's top line back out there. Face off. Taken. It's with Guildford, but Abby Corshaw steals it back off Margot Sear. Nice hands from Caitlin Morrison, who's uh, not composed back there. Good puck handler. Sam Payne picks up the uh, stretch pass, though. So got timed before she plays it. Just over a minute remaining. Towns will look to break in. Nice control from her, good hands, could she get the shot off? She will, just wide. Cool short, will dig it out the corner. Nice layoff by, uh, or dip, redirect I should say from Steph, trying to find Ruben Newlands out wide on the right, less than a minute to go now. Margot will burst through, well read by Caitlin Morrison, but then Margot also quick to read the breakout play. The, Pass out of D, she picked that one off. Abby Minter steals it back behind the net. Caitlin Morrison up along the boards. And carry in down this left wing side. Towards net, but then uh, Guilford will shrink the ice with 22 seconds to go. Marley will hold on, and that's a big save. Beacons have pulled the, the goalie Megan Craig for the extra attacker, but uh, I think it would truly be a miracle if they were to get a goal or two back with so little time left on the clock. But you've got to go for the plate. So, yeah, a little over 21 seconds remaining then. It was a game which Guildford looked comfortable in their possession, but those two goals have brought the Beacons right back into it and set up a tense finale. 
Trachtenberg gets a pass from Vicky Smith. Barbara Berwick with a clearance. Sent through, kicked away from Marley. Can the Beacons get another goal back here? Just out of a reach of first Van der Veen and then Becky Castlewood. But that will do it then. And the Guildford Lightning will come away with a 7-5 road win. Very disappointed for the Beacons, of course, to lose their home opener. But um, Guildford just proved too strong in the end. And they celebrate as they've got the long journey ahead. And it's always a, a journey made that much more easier when you've got the win and the points in the bag. I wonder if uh, Guildford would be so kind to reciprocate when the Beacons make the journey down there and perhaps uh, go a little bit easy on us. All joking aside, though, uh, a good win for Guildford. They'll be pleased to get their season up and running. I know there's a lot of um, people perhaps concerned when they lost players of a calibre of Louise Adams and Megan Stoutz, but their young players have come up good here. And it's two of them who I think will be in contention for player of the game. I think that there's no denying that uh, Margot Sia has got to be a uh, favourite for that. I think she was, uh, well, she got at least two goals by my reckoning, one of which was uh, a tremendous piece of skill, but she looked really good throughout anyway. And uh, we have a, well, I seem to always say it when she visits here, but Abby Minter is a strong performance from her, her work rate was phenomenal, won a lot of uh, turnovers in the offensive zone and a play behind the back of her net as well to set up uh, a team. She was very, very strong indeed, but um, also Beth Hill and uh, Anya Kadayevich, as you'd sort of expect from players of their quality and experience. But we shall see. For the Beacons, I think it's got to be Abby Coulshaw for For her, um, Patrick, and then Becky Castlewood as well, as she was uh, very strong as well. But we shall see. Uh, say Beacons don't have a game next weekend neither do Guildford Beacons are next in action in two weeks time when they make the trip down to Slough to take on the Queen Bees and that's going to be another tough one no easy games in the Elite League of course as, uh, as we know from two years ago and, and as Bristol know only too well from last year as well but um, the Queen Bees even stronger than they were last season and the year before So we will await the announcement then of the uh, players of the game. I'm never entirely sure whose choice it is as to who gets the, uh, the award, whether it's the team themselves, the opposition team. And it's uh, Evie Lawrence who's uh, got the award for Guildford and that it was a strong performance from her one of the younger players on the team she'll uh, take a lot of confidence from that and for the Beacons it's Caitlin Morrison who I did say had a strong game on the on D she looked very composed back there it's never easy when your team's conceded seven goals, of course, but I thought Caitlin did a very good job back there and uh, at times was looking to try and join the rush. So uh, well done to her. Just shows you really how hard the Beacons have worked when uh, they've conceded seven goals in their first two games, yet in both occasions it's been a defender who's been named player of the game. So uh, that's quite a telling statement, I would say. But that will do it for us then for this broadcast not the way the Beacons would have liked it to have ended but a cracking game of hockey all the same I do hope you've enjoyed it wherever you've tuned in from we'll be back with you soon and uh, well enjoy the rest of your day and good night